The things that people take for granted. I mean, you know, picking up a glass of uh, iced tea and drinking it, tying your shoes, picking up a pencil or a pen and writing your name or filling out a form. They're a chore for me. I started to notice it years ago. He was a young man, still. And he started talking about his, his hands were shaking like dad's, like his dad's were. You go out and people see you shaking and they'll say, well, you need a drink. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that I need a drink, you know, it's just I need, I need to quit shaking. And I think this surgery, I'm hoping this surgery takes care of that. And so for patients who have severe tremors that's interfering with their activities of daily living, uh, and they're not responding to medication, one of the best options is, is neuromodulation and deep brain stimulation in particular. After I met Dr. Brandmeier and seeing his track record, and I thought, well, now if he's done two to 300 of these, that's, that, you know, that's pretty good. Now, I guess that was my major reason in staying at WVU and, going, and coming here and doing it. So deep brain stimulation involves basically drilling a small hole in the skull and then putting a small wire or electrode about the size of um, maybe a coffee stirrer. And we put it with uh, very accurate guidance that usually we use uh, computer MRI scans, CT scans. And so we know that by interrupting those patterns with the electrical signals from the stimulator that we can really change how severe those symptoms are and improve the patient's life. See what that looks like. Hold your hand out. Bring that into your nose. What do you say your life, right? What do you oh think? My God. <laughs> they gave me a pen and had me write my name. And I reached over and on my left side oh, wrote my name. My God. <laughs> and it was like going back 20 years. This is the, one of the only kinds of neurosurgeries where, where neurosurgery where patients come to your office year after year, are excited to see you, where they come in and they leave the hospital better uh, than they came in. Uh, and I think that's incredibly gratifying and, and that's why I really love doing it. There's a whole new life experience for me now because I, I'm back to where I used to be. Uh, I don't have to rely on people as much. My wife helped me out so much. I don't even worry about him. We'd go out and I'd just be a nervous wreck worrying about him eating. And now I don't, I forget about it. I don't even watch him. I used to watch him like a hawk and now I don't. There are going to be, I hope, after seeing my story, I hope there's going to be a lot of people come forward and have treatment. There's no reason to hide in your house. Uh, to be ashamed to go out because you shake. Uh, our focus here at Western University is being a center for the entire state to bring those resources uh, to patients so that they get the very best care that's available anywhere in the world. I'm so glad we stayed in West Virginia. You know what I mean? People said, where are you going to Pittsburgh? Are you not? No, no, we, we were so happy with WVU. That's, I mean, it's, it's the only place for us. Oh, I think the investment that WVU is making in the neuroscience area is phenomenal. We have the Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute uh, here as well, and the goal there is to really push the frontiers of neuromodulation to help improve the lives of patients with other disorders of the brain that right now we don't have good treatments for. Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute is a valuable asset to the state. I want to thank everybody involved, Tanya, Dr. Brandmeier, everybody that I dealt with, uh, Dr. Ann Murray, I can't say enough good things about them.